and welcome to another episode of What's on the Pile. I'm Nathan Besner, and joining me is Shane Lee. Hey, what's up? Jane Belcastro. Hello. And Jenner. Still a bit laryngitic, but muscling through this. Oh. <laughs> it's a uh, musical theater night at What's on the Pile as we discuss another Oscar contender with Tick, Tick, Boom, the Lin-Manuel Miranda-directed biopic slash three-man show about Jonathan Larson, writer of the Broadway sensation Rent, which some say changed the musical theater scene. I don't know. Uh, we'll also be discussing a bit about musicals in general, uh, which is where we're going to start. Uh, how much do you all know about musicals? Are you fans? Uh, do you have a favorite? What's up? I think like 10 years ago, I probably would have said, I don't really care for them. Hmm. But then I just kind of started noticing that my comfort food is actually my comfort movies. The ones I go to are musicals. And so I guess I like musicals a lot. Do you have a favorite in particular? Oh, um, yeah, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot Good we did call. that one. Every yeah. time. I love that one. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. But yeah, I have more. I mean, you know, could, <laughs> but but I'll let everybody else chat. <laughs> uh, Jenner. Uh, well, I've said I've. Uh, there are a number of musicals that rank very high amongst my favorite movies. I seem to like uh, musicals best when they are sort of hybridized with something else, uh, particularly. Um, well, uh, particularly sort of horror hybrid uh, musicals. I've mentioned uh, at length before that kind of my big three are the Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, Shock Treatment, which is not exactly horror, but it's horror adjacent just by virtue of being a sequel to the Rocky Horror Picture Show and uh, Phantom of the Paradise. But uh, some other notable ones that I ended up writing down in anticipation of this very subject. Hmm. Very often, things that I have to kind of remind myself actually are musicals, uh, like The Blues Brothers is very high on my list of favorite movies and it's so easy to think of it just as a comedy that it's easy i have to remind myself that it's a musical um similarly i i think that actually a serious case could be made for characterizing the 1973 version of the wicker man (laughs) as a musical which again is one of those things that's easy to overlook because that movie is so patently so many other things besides uh, you know, horror, thriller, uh, I mean, it's one of the absolute touchstones of, uh, of folk horror, as well as a deeply dark comedy, but it is a very musical film just in general, and I can remember at least four musical numbers out of the movie that are more memorable than most of the musical numbers that are in most acknowledged musical films. <laughs> um uh, again, uh, similarly horror adjacent or uh, in, or sort of horror hybridized. I loved uh, Tim Burton's uh, Sweeney Todd, but that movie is one where I, it's like I remember. Oh yeah, that existed. I keep having to remind myself that the movie existed in the first place because because it was that rarest of things, a good movie that Tim Burton made in the aughts. Uh, I'm but, uh, uh, I'm I've been wondering recently about that one because I've wanted to watch it again. But I was thinking, is Amelia ready for this? I don't remember how bad it gets. I, I remember it's it, rated R, but I don't remember it being worse than Evil Dead 2. No, it is not worse than Evil Dead 2. It's it, it's distinctly gruesome, but not acutely so, right. uh, if that makes any sense. As I say, probably the straightest musical that I'm really, really fond of is Singing in the Rain. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, I would want to make a particular shout out uh, because I... It wouldn't be me if I didn't come uh, with uh, with something unbelievably obscure to send everybody scrambling to their IMDb's. Uh, the uh, another one of my favorites, and something that I think really should have a better reputation in the United States, in in the sense of somebody other than frickin' me and a couple of other guys should have frickin' heard of this movie in the United States. Uh, the 2006 uh, Korean movie Midnight Ballad for Ghost Theater uh, is an absolute delight basically it's about a uh, a girl whose grandmother goes missing and she ends up going to a nearby abandoned movie theater or all but abandoned movie theater where she basically ends up getting a job uh just to uh, wait around uh, to uh, see uh, if her grandmother was going to show up because her grandmother said she was going to the movies and then she ends up befriending the collection of uh ghosts that are haunting the theater it's it, it, it's an interesting hybrid of uh, you know sort of haunted house picture, 
uh, you know, and hangout comedy. It's a hmm. beautiful, beautiful film and uh, really, really enjoyable. Interesting. Um, so, Shane, how about you? So, I don't know if I have a particular type of musical that I'm into. I mean, I've always been a fan of, like, the old, the classic musicals, like, like what Jenner mentioned, Singing in the Rain, uh, My Fair Lady, West Side Story, which did not need to be remade. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care how good the new version is. Uh, we don't need a new West Side Story. But, uh, I mean, I do have a handful of, of, music, of more modern musicals that I, I'm a fan of. I mean, one of my top five favorite movies, flat out, I don't know if this counts as a musical. It is full of music, but it's about people playing music. It, it, they're not singing about what they're doing in a, what's the term, like non-diegetic way or something? Or is it diegetic? It's, I, it's, I, think, I think we get what you're saying. Okay, but, but it's about music. It's, the movie is Once. Is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's about it's about two musicians, and they play a lot of music in it. Um, well, performance musical is a distinct substrain of the uh, of the field going all the way back to the '30s. So, yeah, no, you're you're justified in considering that a musical. I think okay. it counts. I mean, I've got several things like that that I uh, like too, like Eurovision. You know, oh, that's yeah. a good one. Oh, I love Eurovision. Um, yeah, Anybody I'm, out there who has I still not need to see seen that. that? And the soundtrack for that movie is genuinely good. Like it's it genuinely so good, good music. Um, Shane, you you actually reminded me of something that that we share as an obscure movie we both liked, which is Novum. Oh, that's right. The the movie that played like once at a film festival, maybe twice at a film festival, yeah. and then kind of vanished. I still have it on DVD. Oh, I don't, I don't think I have a copy of it. Oh, I well, I can always rip it. I don't think they'd mind. <laughs> I still have to see that. It's great. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I've it's seen really I've seen what you guys did with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that was a fun project. That was that was me sitting at my computer right there. You having your computer right there, and us just editing all day. Yeah, and uh, and like every now and then I'd go to your computer, see what you were doing. You come over to my computer, see what I was doing. We'd take breaks and watch Twenty Four on TV. <laughs> <laughs> or like 24 or weeds and uh, that was like one of the best weeks that was just it was just fucking magical just editing all week together yes. and just just sharing what we're doing and yeah that was that was that was amazing yeah it was a really good time that's uh that is one of my favorite projects of all time uh yeah. what we're talking about is uh it's an amv or uh anime music video uh where we took the film novum and made our own documentary out of oh god what's the show's name Beck. Beck, thank Beck, you. Or I, I, think, or Beck. I think the American title is Beck Mongolian Chop Squad. Okay. This is, was, was the release <laughs> yeah. it was called. That's right. I don't think I still have a copy of that. I had one. It's still no, on had, the internet. And I had Beck the Game. I never played it. But I remember having that. But uh, yeah, it, it just brings back memories. Um, anyway, anybody care to guess what my favorite musical is? All right. <laughs> Gypsy. I don't even know what really? that is. You don't know Gypsy? Yeah. No, I don't G know Gypsy. Gypsy is about the ultimate stage mother, uh, Mama Rose, who uh, raised uh, the the most probably the most famous burlesque dancer of all time, Gypsy Rose Lee, uh, played by Natalie Wood in the in the film, and I've been in love with her ever since. Uh, if you haven't seen that, we've got to watch that for this show. I demand yeah. it. Yeah, okay. I, I, I vaguely recall you mentioning that in the past as being important to you. I didn't realize it was, you know, top of the heap. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I still need to see that one as well. I do, too. Still. Never even <laughs> I'll just I'll it. give you one line from it. My favorite line in the entire movie is, uh, is there something wrong with stripping? <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. So uh, that okay. makes me think about one of my favorite lines ever. Uh, it, it is from a musical, the uh, the Forbidden Zone, which is mm. um, oh Richard Elfman, and Richard Danny Elfman, Elfman and Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman did all the music, so and it was his obviously his first uh, film score, I guess, or whatever. I mean, anyway, it, it's fantastic. And there's one line that uh, Susan Terrell says. Uh, Why does it feel so good to be so bad? And I, <laughs> So it's so quotable, the whole thing. And, and oh, the, yeah. the music is really good and fun. And, uh, I mean, the movie is basically a feature-length Oingo Boingo video, but that's a good thing. It is a good <laughs> thing. There's a color version and a black and white version. It's oh, uh, the weirdest thing you've ever seen. Yeah. I, w I, wanna, I have not seen it. I Ooh. haven't seen it either. Yeah, and that just might be one to do. It's this just one girl, all she, she just wears a, uh, like a, a control-top girdle <laughs> and nothing else. 
through the whole thing. Oh, wait, no, she has the tiara on. Uh So that's all. So, you know, don't show the kids, but it's good, (laughs) wacky fun, and it's one of my favorites. And it's very obscure, very obscure, but you can. It has a definite cult following. It does. I think you bought me the DVD, didn't you? Or uh, Blu ray. Blu ray. Yes, yes, I did. You know, and it, you. it just just occurred to me during this discussion when I was making my list. I didn't even think about animated musicals. I didn't think about Disney any of that. That's mm-hmm. like a huge set of musicals. I did. That I just yeah. Totally didn't even think of. What's just... your favorite Disney musical? Mine's Aladdin. Mm. Ooh, I, that's a good question. You you I know, I think Aladdin's what? up there. For I'm me. Gonna, I'm gonna be a bitch and say Fantasia. Oh no, <laughs> mind. But there, you know, hope for lyrics maybe. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I really like Rapunzel. I've never seen it. Wait, Rapunzel or Tangled? Tangled. Tangled. That's it. Tangled. Yeah. I is, really liked that one. Is the, the one about Frozen. Rapunzel. <laughs> is the Fox I, and the Hound a musical? I can't remember. No. I no, don't not. think so. Okay. What about what about the animated Robin Hood? There is um, animated Robin Hood. There is, is a joy. The, the whistle stop by um, oh I can't remember Roger Miller ooh, at the ooh. beginning. Great Mouse Detective. And uh, did the have musical numbers. Robin Hood and Little John <laughs> running through the forest. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, don't know. I might just default to Aladdin because I don't I don't know if a lot of my movies count as musicals, and it's been a uh, while since I've seen a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna have to go with uh, with with Great Mouse Detective as something that I love that happens to be a musical. I don't love it for being a musical. I love it for Vincent Goddamn Price as <laughs> Professor Radigan. I don't but even he does remember get seeing a musical. Glory, exactly. It's one of those things where you have to remind yourself that it had musical numbers. Mm. But Rat Radigan's whole villain number was just a joy. It's just one of the absolute gems of uh, of Vincent Price's late career. Mm. I, I haven't seen that movie in so long. I think I've shown it to the kids. I'm pretty sure I have. Otherwise, that. That's well, show it to him again just to make sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got one to not show to the kids. If we're, uh, if we're just throwing out musicals now. This is not a Disney one, by the way. Mm. Have you guys seen Lars von Trier's Dancer in the Dark? Oh, my yep. God. I've, <laughs> avoided, I've I avoided that movie for a long time. I saw that yeah. once when it came out. I think I liked it. I think I admired it. I didn't enjoy it. I never want to see it again. <laughs> but it's got, Bjork, it's got amazing music because Bjork wrote all original songs for it. And she's very good. I think she won Best Actress at Cannes or something like that and then retired from acting because apparently Lars von Trier is a total asshole. <laughs> and she hated her experience on it. But the soundtrack is amazing. She's really good. Uh, Peter Stormari is really good in it. It's devastating. The final scene is impossible to watch. Mm. It's, it's a Lars von Trier film. I mean, It's a Lars von Trier film. Yeah. But it's definitely a musical. And it's uh, one I haven't seen in a long time. Probably will never see again. I have but, still not actually seen that either. Well, maybe we'll put that on the pile if we're all feeling like, I don't know. You want to be depressed. miserable. Self-laceratory. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it might not even why, be available you, anymore. Why don't you just toss on the house Jack built while you're at it? <laughs> I've read the summary <laughs> of that. Anti- I've never watched Antichrist. it. Antichrist. I've watched Antichrist, actually. I own it on Blu-ray. Rains. <laughs> it's not as bad as, as those, but it, it is still pretty dark. Yeah, he's he's a dark director. I've never been a big fan of Lars von Trier, honestly. I, I just, have to I, allow I really liked Melancholia, but I've been very I, I haven't seen all, that yet. I, I am very iffy on most of his other stuff, though. Yeah, I have no idea who this is. But... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for the better. Uh, for okay, the okay, good. Oh, we don't want to put one on the pile just for Jane, like Breaking the Waves, <sighs> which is, you know, three hours of sexual misery. <laughs> wow. I've, I've got a copy of Dogville. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't I've, make it through that one. I've got a bootleg of Mandalay. Uh, uh, yeah. okay. No, I'm good. <laughs> so, how does everybody feel about Repo the Genetic Opera? Yes! I've never seen it. Yes, yes, yes. I loved it. It's I been loved on my, it. And Devil's Carnival, too. I love it. has been on my Devil's Halloween Carnival list every movies. year. I, I adore Repo. I actually Repo. like the Devil's Carnival movies a lot more than Repo. Not least I because they got Repo the sound on. mixing right. I throw Repo on <laughs> if uh, I want to just watch something and fold laundry. That is, yeah, that's good comfort food right there. Yeah, Re- Repo I look at as uh, an amazing soundtrack with uh, some interesting visuals that have been attached to it. Uh, but... It has some very iffy qualities. As we observed one time when we were trying to watch it on your surround system, Nate. I remember. <laughs> completely did not get how to mix for 5.1. Yeah. They just didn't. So the dialogue was 
almost you know it, unbelievably recessed in comparison to the uh, to the sound it was like it was like watching television and then it goes to a commercial um, <laughs> you know, blow out your speakers while you're you know yeah like there's you can't only crank the center channel so much man um, <laughs> i've had to do that on so many mixes recently like just i i don't i don't know what's happened to the fine art of uh studio mixing but it's gotten really bad on a lot of releases i've found or at least on television yeah. broadcasts subtitles for everything that's yeah that's how i go I I just have a very carefully tuned uh, set of uh, of individuated levels for uh, for this uh, the sound system in the living room. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well. Speaking of carefully attuning, um, what is your favorite musical to to test uh, new projection or television hardware? Um, I don't know. My go-to track uh, tracks are usually some of Not... the, some of the stuff from the Hans Zimmer factory. No, but... no, oh, no, no. Yes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I love this no, too. Okay. So. Uh, you know, The Greatest Showman uh, is uh. It is a delightful movie, a uh, wonderful movie. It is the best test of HDR performance in a, uh, the, or the UHD disc specifically is the best test of HDR performance for a visual system in existence. Basically, if The Greatest Showman doesn't look right on your 4K TV or projector, you have calibrated the TV or projector incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> that that, that movie is uh, beloved in this household. Uh, oh, yeah. Starring I can't the, get enough the incomparable of that. huge act what? man. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah. huge yak man. <laughs> huge act man. Huge yak man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was an interesting instance, as much as anything else, because it ended up uh, starting off in the theater, kind of underperforming, but ended up becoming a real sleeper hit uh, the year that it was released. An interesting instance of another one of those instances, or one of those instances where we didn't just, you know, through advertising and through studio propaganda, getting quote unquote the next big musical shoved down our throat. Mm -hmm. Uh it ended up almost slipping out, but then garnered an organic uh following. And this is probably as it should be. I mean, I as going back to uh, Shane's earlier comments about West Side story, essentially the studios try to force musicals to happen every few years. You know, you get Hugh Jackman in uh that uh, uh Oscars, you know, way back in uh, the uh, the early, uh, the, like 2009 or 2010 oh. or somewhere about uh, you know, with that whole the music is back number. Well, A, the musical never left. B, no it isn't. <laughs> if you can um, <laughs> if you can uh, absorb that particular paradox. Basically the 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 studios keep trying to make fetch happen and fetch is happening. It's just not happening in the way that they wanted it to. So fuck West Side Story. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody I mean, needed uh, it. Uh, Nobody wants it. Steven Spielberg is a fucking hack. Fuck you. <laughs> Damn. I, I couldn't agree more. Wow. But one, one musical that did come out last year, which is related to the movie we're doing tonight, is uh, In the Heights, which was written and directed yeah. by Lin-Manuel Miranda. That I still that was need good. to see. That was, that was a solid musical. I don't remember a lot about it, but I remember enjoying it. I actually went out to the theater for that. Yeah, that was really good. I, I enjoyed that as well. Um, yep. As far as modern, me... oh, sorry. oh no, 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 not at all. I, I just, I was going to change the subject because it was making me think. Well, what you were talking about, uh, La La Land for some reason. Oh um, yeah, no, I, I actually really loved La La Land as well. I know that may be a minor, a minor or at least an, a, an evenly divided opinion. Actually, <laughs> you know, I liked it the first time I saw it. Then I started watching it with my mom, and she was like, "Um, do they ever get it together?" And I'm like. Oh, do you really want to know? And she's like, yes. So I'm like, well, they don't. She's like, then why are we bothering? Let's find something better. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You are right. You are 100% right. This is not worth watching. So. I thought the movie was fine. I thought it was as, as fine as could be, as down the middle fine as it could be. That, that's all. It's I not did... great, but it's just fine. I'm, yeah. with, I'm with Jane's mom. <laughs> There's musicals everywhere. It, they're all over. I mean, it's not just, you know... You, they they put out two or three a year. I mean, hey, they did Cats. My God, I, I never saw that. that. I you... want the butthole I version. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I no, did I, not watch. I, it I, I I watched that movie, and it is as horrifying as you'd think it is. It's we hate <laughs> watch that movie. 
Oh, Poor did you Amelia just fall into that un- uncanny valley and yeah, it was try creepy. to crawl out? Yeah, I guess. yeah just, just because I got it cheap as dirt, and I was thinking that this was one of those things that uh, is going to uh, be one of those so bad it's not necessarily good, but worth seeing type experiences. That said, I still haven't actually mustered the altered state necessary to think that it's actually a good idea to see the copy that I've had for well over a year now. <laughs> There's... I'm going to tell you guys, uh, since Cats has been around forever, I'm going to tell you guys the ending. Um, Go ahead. I, I saw it <laughs> sure. in, in yeah. the theater, and I was like, this is terrible. I actually paid to see it. Oh, so is, the, is the musical good, though? Or no, is, no, no, no. Okay. it's not. No. So it was doomed from the start. I, I mean, I liked Have it when seen, I was um, like 12. Kimmy Schmidt, uh, the, you know, the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. And they, uh, I guess, are, are showing people just showing up to be be to audition for cats and it, like more and more people come in and they and it they make up new cats and it, it's terrible I mean, you the, have cat, to... the company just keeps getting bigger by people sneaking in as their own cat character right you know, if yeah they come up a... with a rhyme to sell it they say they're part of the show now <laughs> <laughs> and that's well, what it feels like there's no point the yeah. whole you know if you're not young and beautiful then change <laughs> yeah, I you know it's just there's no good message, there's no good story. There are one good song, mm. and that's the, it. The original poems were lovely, but uh, they were not what Andrew Lloyd Webber did with them. Right, mm. it's it was not hot a, garbage. It's not a good. I, I I spent thirty bucks when I almost when I probably didn't have thirty bucks to go see it. Got a nosebleed section, literally nose. I think I had. <laughs> I don't know. It was awful. I couldn't see a thing. Uh, it was just a terrible play. Mm-hmm. I hated it. <laughs> the movie's hilarious. Well, that, that's why I, I I went ahead and picked up a copy. I figure I'll get to it, and at some point, I'm gonna have to have one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It, what? <laughs> it, it literally oh, ends with Idris Elba like hanging on to a balloon, going like, "I'll get you next time, gadget." It's wow, so cartoony. It's oh, amazing oh, how bad damn. it is. They I think make... we should watch oh. this with Bob. <laughs> that would thought. be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. Does it, going in expecting to savage it, I can see that being a good party film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, have some adult beverages on hand for that one. It'll make it no much problem. more pleasant. Yeah, that was that was implicit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get to, but we did have a nine-year-old commenting the entire time, well, and that's... that was pretty classic. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great, actually. <clears throat> we she was have, very uh... excited. Yeah, you should have a, uh, you know, a nine-year-old reacts to cat <laughs> video. <you know? laughs> well, we've talked about uh, favorite musicals. What about least favorite musicals? What's uh, what's cat. something? Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> True. No, I didn't, I didn't even it. think about that. Wow. Hmm. Well, in the, uh, I have I have a couple that I can point to that are at the very least severely disappointing as films. Oh, I've got one. Uh, but go ahead. I, I, Ishtar I, was I, terrible. I, <laughs> I, I I the Ishtar I still need to revisit, and again, one of those things where the musicality of it is arguable. But <laughs> uh, even so, uh, I actually quite liked uh, the stage play of the Phantom of the Opera. The, uh, the Andrew Lloyd Webber one. The movie is freaking terrible because that mu- music does not work in a cinematic context. Mm. It's all bombast all the time, and it, especially with Joel Schumacher's pretty but basic uh, uh, direction, uh, just you know, didn't work for a second uh, as a movie. Shane, yeah. I haven't seen. Oh, oh well, I've only seen this movie once, and I can't tell you why I hated it, but I hated it through and through. And it's, it's a very popular musical. And that's Chicago. I, <laughs> I I saw it in the theater, walked out like, just just not just like okay, whatever. And then it won Best Picture, and it was uh, it was all over the place. Um, I do remember we went to an anime convention once, and during the cosplay, my friends were actually in a big Chicago number during the cosplay. Like that's how big it was. That it was people at anime conventions were were putting it on. So, but I, I don't remember anything about it. So I just remember not liking it. 
Didn't they make Richard Gere sing? They made him they sing. Did. They made him tap dance. I remember the tap dancing scene. John C. Riley's in it. He's good. It's yeah. a movie. It's good. It's a movie that happened. Yeah, it yeah. Is I thought a movie it was that fine. Happened. I liked it just fine. But I mean, of course, my that's just my opinion. I think. Oh, well, I think I went. I think I saw it after he got all the nominations and all the fanfare and everything, and so I was expecting to be blown away oh, yeah. and just fell flat for me. So I completely uh, forgot that was nominated for anything. It won. It won Best Picture. Oh, it did? Oh, my yeah, God. That's, yeah, so. <laughs> Going back to it, it's one of those things where I suppose, based on the predispositions of early 20th century Hollywood, uh, when, when people talk about genre movies not getting uh, the, the respect that they should get at the Oscars, I mean, we can point to westerns and musicals as being sort of the distinct exception to that. And it, this has always been the case. Why the... Uh, the uh, the Oscars should in any way be biased toward those genres and uh, and against you know science fiction, fantasy, and horror movies is just one of those ongoing lingering injustices of the world at large. It's not the biggest by a damn sight, but it's there, and you know we know. <laughs> Structurally, musicals are essentially like slasher films. I agree with you, but unpack that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you have the the big bombastic uh, explosions of emotion, which are the songs themselves. Uh, those are translated into the horror genre, into slashers in particular, as their big bombastic kills. Uh, each individual kill is just like a musical number. And you have that structure of of having your musical numbers dulled out. Uh, you'll have near the the middle, the main character uh, will get attacked at some point and have their first real scare. Uh, they will also, in a musical, have uh, have their first big number about like I'm coming out of my shell or whatever. And, uh... <laughs> Everybody has AIDS. Um, <laughs> yeah. <to> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, they share a lot of uh, commonality just structurally, the, the, the way they work. Uh, they always end with a big musical number or a big, uh, big splash where you have to end the bad guy. It's, um, it's, it's, I've always found it really interesting. I think you may have, uh, I, I, I can absolutely see it, and I think you may have hit on one of the reasons why I find the recent tendency for a number of musicals, most particularly and I think most egregiously, Repo the Genetic Opera, to indulge in recitative, uh, that is to say, singing uh, lines that aren't necessarily songs, but just singing all of the dialogue just to sing all the dialogue, even all of the interstitial stuff, drives me up the Red. wall. Yeah, no, that was, late, the, the that new late the, Miz. Yeah, no, it's just everybody's you know, singing is singing all the time, and you need to cut. You need to dial it back once in a while. It's not an operetta. Uh, it's uh, it, it's not an opera, and even in opera, people talk from time to time. <laughs> uh, no, not everything has to have uh, has to have musical notation attached to it. Sometimes people just freaking talk. Uh, the ab- it, the the abject unreality of the constant rest- recitative always uh, uh, clangs periodically and drags me out of whatever it was that I was watching, even if I was otherwise enjoying it. Again, Repo the Genetic Opera being the one that I point to is probably the most egregious example of, would you just have a fucking conversation just this one time? <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind that they don't have a conversation. I, I think it's just one big dumb music video and I'm I'm here for well, it. Well, I mean the really weird thing was the stage play was not all recitative. The the stage play they act, was actually a musical as opposed to operetta. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Individual mileage will vary. <laughs> you know, speaking of uh speaking of rent, I never said what my uh least favorite play uh musical of all time was and it is in fact Rent. Um, wow. Yeah, we so, got about uh, a half hour into the movie last night, and I was like, I really don't like this. Let's watch something else. And I was totally agreeing. I was like, well, I think I'll finish it someday, but just because I... Anyways, we, we interrupt. Continue. Yeah. Continue. We'll get into that when we uh, get back from our break. Uh, we will be right back. Nice segue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
And we're back. Uh, next up, we'll continue our musical discussion with Tick, Tick, Boom, a film adaptation of the stage work of Jonathan Larson, famously the writer of Rent. It was directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda and has an Academy Award nominee for Best Actor in Andrew Garfield, who plays Larson. Uh, so this was on my pile. I, I didn't I had no intention of seeing it until we started taking on the uh, Academy Award nominees. But uh, who else hadn't seen this? I hadn't. I hadn't. I I haven't seen Rent. I think I'm the only one. Although I do have an interesting relationship with Rent. Actually, I was mistaken. I said on the last podcast that I thought this movie was about Lin Manuel Miranda. I forgot that it was about Jonathan Larson. But anyways, my freshman year in college, I lived next to my RA in the hall, and he was a music grad student doing like a thesis or something on Rent. And so he would blast the Rent soundtrack literally eight to ten hours every single day. I lived there <laughs> for the entire. I lived there for one semester. It was through the walls though, so I couldn't really hear the words or the music i heard like i got like the shape of the music but it would be like eight to ten hours constant every single day so so, like, so, wow. so as with the rest of us seasons of love makes you want to punch somebody <laughs> see i don't i couldn't i couldn't hear the words i could hear like the shape of the melody so i could probably pick that out if i heard it but it was it was relentless and that's like that's all i've ever known about rent i've never i've never wanted to watch it uh the musical or the movie just no interest but uh you know, I, I did want to see this movie because I like Lin Manuel Miranda, I like Andrew Garfield, and uh, that was pretty yeah. pretty much what had me on board there as well. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, we actually liked Tick Tick Boom so much that we were like, "Let's watch Rent." <laughs> that turned out to be a what mistake. a mistake! <laughs> what a mistake! Uh, so Rent was, it was awful. Not good. Rent was awful. The, thir- we the, first 30, the first 30 minutes were certainly awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I've said, I, I had always been under the impression that that was a movie that Chris Columbus wanted to make a lot more than it wanted to be made by Chris Columbus, rather like the, uh, the first two uh, Harry Potter movies. Uh, and I saw nothing in that first half hour to think that that movie wanted to be made by anybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that it's, was... Uh, it... it, it uh, my my primary exposure to it, other than the trailer, and you know, th- thanks to the trailer, of course, now frickin' everybody knows how many minutes there are in a year. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, the 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 trailer was was my primary exposure to the actual content of it previously because I saw it in the theater back when I was going to the theater uh, the, the movies all the time, uh, and uh, it was a very self important trailer. It was just the opening number of uh, of the musical with some other bits of uh the uh, the movie cut into it. Um, it's a very so self-important th- musical. Very self-important and my other primary exposure to it of course uh, as, as we joked ar- about a little bit during the break uh was the absolutely savage and spot the fuck on parody uh that it received in uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone's Team America World Police. <laughs> Everyone's got AIDS. <laughs> AIDS, 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 AIDS. I've AIDS. seen it, but I don't remember it. <laughs> but you know that whole um, his style is just kind of taken over Broadway. There, yeah. you know, I think there's very few things out there now that doesn't have that, that style. We were watching um, Hawkeye on uh, Disney Plus, and they do an Avengers. Um, Musical. Rogers the musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogers the musical, and it it is the same style of music and dance, and you know, singing about what they're doing and singing about you know, you know who they are and and what their powers are. <laughs> it's just I mean, terrible. It's very funny. I, I don't know anything about Jonathan Larson, and I don't mean to speak ill of the dead, but I get the impression that he was kind of insufferable. We like him in this movie <laughs> because Andrew Garfield is so charismatic. Yeah, but the way he says "I'm the future of musical theater," the way he's so obsessed with turning thirty—I mean, I know he died very young, tragically, but I mean, I remember the first, the first short film I made. The day I met the actress Greg Garrett, who I've worked with many times since, I told—I had mentioned that I was turning thirty in a month, and she asked me how I felt about that, and I answered truthfully, "I don't care. Like, I don't feel <laughs> anything about that." It's like, why is he so obsessed with this number? Because because Sondheim did it when he was 27? I mean, it's not like he's an actress. I don't mean that in a sexist way, but like the reality is if you're an actress and you're over 30, it's going to be almost impossible to make it. If you're a writer, who cares how old you are? 
So that whole thing, that whole obsession with 30, like really bugged me. I mean, I know we're all over 30. We've <laughs> already been through it, but it, it wasn't anything to me. And it came off as very self-important uh, for the character. Gosh, you know, when I turned 30, I uh, got bangs, which we all know is a cry for help. <laughs> but, but I loved my 30s. My 30s were excellent. They're so much better than my 20s. Do you Same guys, here, actually. Do you guys remember what I did for my 30th? Because I don't. I, <laughs> didn't, we, didn't we do uh, Wizard oh. People in the theater? <laughs> that was the Wizard People theater party. That, yeah. was, yeah. Awesome. that was, awesome. was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. I relate a little bit to him just because I felt that with 40. I, I had the midlife thing that I'm kind of shedding off at this point. But uh, I, I get that obsession with the number thing. I, I get that to a certain degree. Maybe not at 30. Like, 30 was awesome. I miss 30. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I get the obsession with feeling like you're running out of time to create something great. I, yeah. I do get that. That that came up, that, that came across, I think. That's that's what I mean. That, yeah. yeah. Gosh, I had a half century party. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know Larson at this point, and and in Tick Tick Boom, uh, even as a uh, biograph or an autobiographical piece. Uh, does seem to be sort of the uh, the, the the quintessence of what I tend to think of with a little sort of distinct shade uh, mixed into it, the quote-unquote, I'm gonna be somebody musical. Uh, or indeed, that particular strain of uh, particularly American theater in its own right. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the young guy uh, putting his nose to the grindstone and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, trying to be somebody. Whatever the fuck that means to that particular person. It's... Uh, it's disingenuously over ingenuous a lot of the time. I did not get that feeling from Tick Tick Boom, mostly because the direction by Lin Manuel Miranda is so sincere and the performance by Andrew Garfield is so freaking beautiful. And uh, because I actually did like the songs in this one, and that goes a long way toward kind of greasing that wheel. Oh, that one song uh, at the diner. Um with all of the old uh the old theater people. Yeah. That was, that was amazing. Great. Like Baby yeah. Newworth shows up and uh Felicia Rashad yep. and the Skylar Bern- sisters. Bernadette Peters. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Joel yeah. Gray. Joel yeah, Gray that's, waiting yes. for his chat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I will say in the moment in watching the movie I enjoyed it. I did like him in the movie. It was only thinking about it afterwards where I was like, hmm, this It's one of those ones that like it would have been that great to know. In real life. I, I'm gonna have to allow. I I have because I did like the movie so much in the moment. I have not made much of a point since then of kind of picking it apart in my head. I'm just kind of content to have enjoyed the experience. It wasn't a life changing experience, but I thought it was a lovely movie. Nah. I would I would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed it a lot. It's I, not gonna be it's not gonna be one of my all timers. I don't think. Although some of the numbers are very catchy. I do I do think that Andrew Garfield absolutely deserves his nomination absolutely oh, yeah. no he's so, so good so good oh yeah, between so, that between that so you talented know what? he had a good year last year <laughs> yeah yeah he definitely did and i guess uh, yeah <laughs> i was gonna go into spoilers because i'm so excited um, um the <laughs> no, humor the humor that he brought to this and uh, I, well actually just through the whole thing it just it was funny mm-hmm. it's clever i just loved it. I loved it. So hey. <laughs> Andrew Garfield is usually a supremely, I know I always use this word, agreeable uh, presence. Affable. In, in affable. Affable is good, too. Uh, presence in a movie. Uh, and in, in, in this case, uh, they lean hard into that, but it works. That's why I like him so much as Peter Parker. I, I really like his Peter Parker because he if he, he feels like Peter Parker. His mentality, his his personality, just feels perfect for the character. He's always taking the piss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he's but he's not like making you feel like he's not making fun of you. Yeah, he's, he's not. He's, he's making not fun making with you feel you. less than. Right. right. He's just having fun, and uh, I love that. I think he's. Oh, you'll great. be fine. The webs will dissolve in twelve hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. Um, I love seeing uh, uh, Bradley Whitford and Richard Kind. Yes, yeah. yes. Whitford is Sondheim, who by all, by all accounts Sondheim was an absolute mensch. So mm-hmm. uh, 
and and again, you know, dearly missed, even if I'm very iffy on Into the Woods even now. Um, <laughs> no, same, same. Or, or I should say that, half, oh, I should know, say ha- half of Into the Woods. Uh, Into the Woods may be my least favorite musical. That may be it. Oh. Never seen I just, that one either. I don't. I'm not interested in it. So. I just hate First that. great. There's a woman who is essentially raped and then punished for it. Oh well. Yeah, yeah, Welcome yeah, to the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, into the woods. I I uh, always said, and I think I've actually said this to at least Nate and uh, and Jane on one occasion or another. Is it's a great first half and a second half that makes you wish that you had left the theater. That that, that it had just ended halfway through the thing. <laughs> uh, there's only one good gag in the second half, uh, which is when the narrator gets hit gets hit with an arrow and dies. Um, <laughs> Which they didn't even manage to carry over to the movie because the narrator was not actually on screen. They lost the only good good gag in the second half of Into the Woods in the movie. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, oh, well. Yeah. But anyway, leaving that rant aside. It, it, it's not ba- Into the Woods was not bad enough for me to freaking hate it. I get the feeling that if we had gotten further than the half an hour into, uh, into Rent, uh, then... Uh, that that might have ended up as you know one of the ones that would have gotten progressively bad enough that I would freaking hate it. But uh, <laughs> you 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 Nate it never actually got around to speak uh, to uh, articulating why you thought Rent was your least favorite music. Well, I, I think we've already we've already kind of nailed it on the head with uh, self important. Uh, uh, okay. It, it was really it was huge back when I was in high school. And I went to an arts high school, so we had a musical theater department, and everybody wanted to do Rent all the time. And that means play it all the time. Everybody, the, every, any boombox that existed on, on our, at our high school had Rent playing on it at some point. And I got so goddamn tired of hearing it over and over and over that it just makes me want to vomit to think about it. But, how, I mean, but you have seen the, a production of it? Or yes. The, okay. I a just production. Was curious, or if you just like heard everything and was tired of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's my main you're, reason. I've you're, sort of heard everything and I'm tired of it. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> still you're still gonging it based on the primary source, not just the association. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so having not that's, seen, that's fair. Ha- having not seen Rent, I'm, I'm wondering how much of that was in here. Like, of course, they lived in a rundown apartment building. There's there's HIV in the story, but a lot of these movies they try to make, you know, everything. They try to you know retcon everything into their into their life in a way that's you know to make everything like a moment where he he realizes oh this should be about AIDS this should be about this is there a lot of that in this movie like I couldn't really tell because I don't know what is in Rent other than the music there was no characters I know of that didn't have AIDS except maybe the guy in the Range Rover <laughs> that's in, it in, in Rent mm-hmm. yeah everybody yeah no, everybody that, the thing about the use of uh, the AIDS crisis and Tick Tick Boom. Uh, is it it felt organic? You it know, did. You, you, yeah. The, the people genuine, knew, very the people good. People knew lots of people with AIDS, but it wasn't everybody had AIDS. That was the thing about Rent is, as Trey Parker and Matt Stone so acutely <laughs> observed, everybody has AIDS, um, and at that point, it devalues the very real crisis that that represented at the time. I mean, if it had been like three out of five people in the show. Maybe. But no, it's, you know. Because it was something like that when when Broadway got hit. Nine out of ten. Pretty much. It was a lot. There there were a ton of people just lost to to, to that disease forever. Some great artists. I mean, one one of the things that I've been thinking about recently a little bit, this is a little ancillary, but I... I feel it flirts with profundity. Again, uh, maybe self-important. <laughs> fucking sue me. Uh, but uh, one of the things that occurred to me is one of. I wonder if part of the reason that we aren't as a world in the situation that we are is because a lot of the boomers that could have saved us died in the AIDS crisis. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I've cons- yeah. That one crossed my mind and gave me a bit of a shiver the other day. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, but even so. Well, my, my point was is that um, there were so many people who just, uh, in, in the movie, that it was a fact of their life. Um, it made it quotidian. That it, it was like 
too much. If they just like had, you know, a, a few characters that had it and a few characters that didn't, it might feel a little more real. It just was like, it. I don't. Does that make sense? Like, I guess. I mean, in a community, yeah, you're I, I gonna have a lot. Of, it just seemed like too many. Like, I don't know. I don't just, know. Just by virtue of it being something that frickin' everybody was dealing with, it made it feel. It, it it deprived it of any actual dramatic freight. Yeah. I mean, the, look, I spent five years of my life basically living in a gay club. I just, uh, I had a bunch of friends that worked there and lived there. And you know, like about once a month, they carry some uh, poor gentleman up to go see the the drag show for the last time. I mean, it was, it was heartbreaking and horrible. Um, but I, so I mean, I, I I know it was a big deal. I mean, I saw it. Um, I had a friend that nearly uh, passed away from, it, but he he made it. He had, it's still alive today, actually. So, but he he was on his last legs. But he got the cocktail and made it. Thank goodness. Um, but um, you know, I I just it just seems like unrealistic that it would be so many people. I don't know. Maybe it's just New York. <laughs> but, yeah, I, th- I think maybe on a certain level, that's what it felt like at like the time. Like a hundred percent of the cast, no, ninety-nine percent of the cast. Uh, yeah. No, it it is it is a lot. It is it is too much. I I agree. Um, but I do wonder if if it was a commentary on uh, on how many people did have it and how many people were lost from from the Broadway scene forever. Yeah. That's possible. I, I'm just saying that when something is something that everybody is dealing with in in, uh, in the picture, it robs it of its dramatic freight. Hmm. Like say, it may be it may be mimetic, but it's undramatic. Yeah, I yeah. I would agree with that. I would yeah. definitely agree with that. It's uh, I haven't seen I, the movie. I don't plan on seeing the movie, but I agree yeah. with you anyway. But anyways, back to Tick, Tick, Boom. Where, tick, wh- Tick, Boom. Is I liked great. Tick, Tick, Boom. Where, I, where, I, I where, loved it. Where Lovely these spa- film. The sparing doling out of HIV positive characters actually redounded strongly to the drama of the picture. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree. And appa- I agree. Apparently, uh, the actual guy who Michael is based on is still alive today. Oh, that's oh good. Great. Yeah. Excellent. I thought that was some good trivia. Yeah. That guy was fantastic. I don't know who that actor was, but he's yeah. fantastic. He looked really familiar. I'm sure he's been in something else I liked. But... Oh, well. I didn't. A lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of welcome familiar faces in this movie. Um, I mean, absolutely beautiful, no ego whatsoever, supporting role by the luminous Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah. Uh, was uh, one of the things that I thought out is... You know, she was. It, you had the feeling that she was just in this because she was proud to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. I adore her as an actress. I wasn't down with the whole high school high school musical thing, uh, of course. But the the show Powerless, Powerless, see, is sorely sorely missed. Uh, oh, we love that show so much. It. I think they made she, like five episodes. I it think was... they made it to thirteen, but only nine were aired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. It's a, a show about uh, about uh, 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 Wayne uh, tech uh, or the uh, the technical department of Wayne Enterprises uh, oh. in the DC universe. I remember that show. Yeah, and no, there are like, all sorts of supervillains and superheroes wrecking the town, and these people are just trying to make a living. And yeah, it had, uh, and it had uh, Vanessa Hudgens and uh, and Danny Pudi and Ron Funches and Alan oh. Tudyk. And, Alan uh, Tudyk, uh, as, as, uh, as Bruce Wayne's cousin Van. Van <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> um, <laughs> the show was an absolute joy, and uh, and uh, I, yeah, if I had never seen anything else by Vanessa Hudgens, I would absolutely adore her based on this, but. Or based on that, but her performance in this, just as a supporting character, just as someone who show who showed up to fucking sing, I mm-hmm. thought was uh, just lovely and you know wonderfully egoless. And as the agent Judith Light, who was what was she? Who's yes. who's the boss or Charles in charge? Who's One the of those, boss? Who's the boss? Yeah, I didn't realize until afterwards that that was her as the agent. I we had that great. moment of she's so familiar, she's so familiar. Who the hell is she? And it was <laughs> and it was freaking the boss. The boss. 
Yeah, she was really good too. Yeah. It, it was just great. It really was. I also I liked thought... uh, Alexandra Ship uh, playing Susan. Uh, she also played uh, Storm in in the most recent X Men movies, which oh. I thought she was fine in, even though the movies the movie was terrible. Um. Yeah, suffered from an underwritten role in those cases. But a, a very yeah. good actress, a luminous, uh, a luminous presence. Uh, yeah. definitely great singing a, voice. Great singing voice. Definitely a bit of a thankless role in this one. But oh, uh, and they, she even points that out at one point. Uh, yeah. she's the girlfriend. She's the long-suffering yeah. girlfriend, and he's the artist. And but at the same time, that moment is where it's like, are you fucking writing a song about this right now? <laughs> <laughs> so simultaneously. Uh, Funny and true and just kind of emotionally devastating because every person who fancies themselves an arty type probably had that little moment of, oh shit, I've fucking done that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this movie captures the panic of trying to write really, really well. Yes. You know? I mean, the, the, the procrastination, the, the fear, the deadline, the, the blank page, all that stuff comes across very accurately. I, I'm sure we've all been through all that. Yeah, kind of no. Stuff. As, a delve, like as a delving into the artistic writing, process, yeah. it is a very, very, very strong mirror, and, and uh, he, that that was another thing that I appreciated about it mm-hmm. as much as anything else. And even the scene where he's in the pool, and all of a sudden he magically figures everything out, which seems like a movie thing. I've had those experiences. I've had, you know, I've been struggling with like a story or whatever, and I've had a moment where everything just like downloaded into my head out of nowhere. Hell, you know, hell, it, it, that I, I, kind of stuff happens. I, I only ever finished uh, or forced myself to finish the screenplay for what is arguably Besner's and my most famous, uh, uh, to the extent that that can qualify, uh, work because I told myself a joke in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, occasionally lightning strikes. <laughs> yeah, those those moments are real. They happen. Maybe it didn't happen in this exact way because it's a movie, but it. I, I did like the qualifier at the beginning of it that this all happened except for what was made up by Jonathan Larson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't I I don't know anything about the original stage production. I don't know how much of this this movie is close to that or if it just used pieces of it. Um because it was kind of a biopic slash uh slash musical. But uh of course it didn't get into rent at all. Which I kind of actually appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. There's one. There's one voiceover line about it. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, that's enough. The end. I, yeah. I I will freely allow that I like movies better than theater, especially musical theater. And so, if the stage production is anywhere near as good as the movie, it's probably a pretty good play. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like so. It's it's basically a the the Tick Tick Boom show is basically a one man show with some musicians, right? So I feel like the stuff with him on stage was just taken directly from that, I guess. Mm-hmm. By the way, Garfield, amazing in those scenes. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I never knew he had that kind of singing voice. He trained yeah. for it, apparently. Like, he trained his ass off for this movie to, it, to it, get it, that it sh- singing voice. It shows because it felt effortless, and that's what happens when you train that well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he put in the work, definitely. That's, wow, that's why he has a yeah. nomination. Yeah, no, the, 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 the music and performances in uh, in this are absolutely faultless. Yeah. To the point where at the risk of th- just throwing that one bit of shade that one time, I can't believe it's a product of the same guy who made fucking Rent. Uh, <laughs> but, um... it, it, Rent, it, for all, all, its, all its self-importance, Rent did change the theater landscape, for better it, or worse. It, 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 maybe a bit too much, but that's okay. <laughs> It cha- I don't think that uh, Hamilton exists today without Rent. That I was thinking Probably, the same thing yeah. as well. No, no, this you can definitely see the uh, the influence on, on Larson. Well, I mean, not everybody, but you can definitely see it specifically on Lin Manuel Miranda. Mm-hmm. It, it it's you know one of those things where you know the the ones who are influenced by it can very often produce better work because I do really like Hamilton, mm-hmm. uh, and that was really electrifying both on stage as well as the. Uh, 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 the, I I saw uh, I saw that one in uh, Schenectady, uh, the uh, I guess in uh, nineteen before the late unpleasantness, mm-hmm. and that was amazing. But the film that uh, that Disney put up uh, was pretty good too. Um, 
<laughs> Did everyone catch his cameo in the movie? Yes. As, yes. As, as the as the he was a chef, yeah. 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 Cook. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's fun that he just gave himself that one little thing and not... I mean, he basically Hitchcocked. So. Yeah. That's cute. I, he, it works. He's also... He he's like it. He's like the biggest musical theater nerd on the planet. And so yeah. I get the feeling this is a movie for musical theater nerds. And, uh, Absolutely. And I, I also get the feeling that he put himself in, in that scene because he was surrounded by all these, like, mentors and, and people that he looks up to and uh, just wanted to be amongst them. And I think that's great. I would do the same thing if I were in his position. I'd be like, hey, Bruce Campbell, do you want to be in my movie for no reason? <laughs> and at the same time, at this at this point, uh, they were probably all having that moment. I get to work with Lin Manuel. <laughs> uh, so, it, it's recursive, and that is as it should be. Uh, in, he is know. on fire. Yes. Yeah. Then Canto. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely need to see in the Heights. Hamilton. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's I need great. to see Encanto. Yeah, it's I great too. Do watch it. It's good. It's really nice. Don't talk about Bruno. It's in my head. <laughs> Uh oh! Yeah. Hey, do, do we have the rights that's to that? That's another. Nate? That's another oh, musical. No. It's another Should musical. I bleep that? No, I bleep no, that? no, no, it's fine. It's, uh, no, it's uh, it's fair use in that case. I think even Disney would have to allow, especially since I think you were off key. Oh yeah, I was, oh. was intentionally <laughs> so. Uh, if you'd sampled it, you might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and Canto is very, very enjoyable. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, watch that, enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah, loved his uh, work with uh, in Moana. Some of my favorite music. That's one of my favorite musicals of the last decade. Uh, oh, cool! I haven't seen that either. Really oh, yeah, that one's really good. And the rock sings, and that should be worth the price of admission alone. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Jemaine Clement. Yeah, Jemaine yes. Clement. I, I was I just going to say. I think, it's Nate, you crab. made me watch that clip, I think. I, I the did. With Jemaine, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, great because it's, it's Jemaine. It's his Bowie. It's yeah. easily his best Bowie. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, uh, I liked this, uh, this movie, though I did, I did take a note at one point uh, that uh, it made me feel like shit because I'm so old and unaccomplished. Oh. I, I will freely allow I had a bit of that as well. I think I'm accomplished shine, enough. Shine I could just, you know, yeah. not worry about Walk it. it. Yeah. I'm not I'm not even all that accomplished, but I'm good. It's good enough. I did fine. I did fine. I had some adventures. We're doing you know, fine. We're, We're all doing, doing fine. fine. If I don't do another thing, I'm still going to be satisfied with myself. It's fine. Well, no, I, you're, I, you're still collecting residuals, so hey. Ba- <laughs> base, <yeah. laughs> I uh I plan on doing a thing. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but I think we're back on for another project. And, Hoping uh, so. That's awesome. Do the thing. Yeah. Do the thing. Do the thing. Do the damn thing. And that's, the, <laughs> and that's Tick, Tick, Boom. It's a movie that makes you want to do the thing. It does. It does. Maybe, yeah. it does Maybe not by 30, because fuck you, but still. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I know, have... I think... Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's go fine. Ahead. I was, was going to change the subject, so go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I had fun on all that time, so now I'm now I'm having to get to work. No. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? Of course, now I have no idea what I was going to say. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Um, I think that maybe in the future <laughs> I should remember how many times a movie made me cry because I believe Tick, Tick, Boom uh, brought me to tears. At, it was at least twice. Oh, wow. At, at least, least twice. twice. I think I might um, have counted a third. We could do like a uh, Jane's tear jerk <laughs> because honestly, this one, yeah, definitely, definitely brought on the waterworks. And of course, I'm a sucker for musicals too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, we got to wreck your mascara, make it for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which, which scenes set you off? Um, the the one where he's playing piano in the park. Oh uh, yeah, it's like that's great. I, when he was oh when he was singing at the end to sort of Susan and um uh Vanessa Hudgens at the same time sort of that thing uh ah uh, 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 uh. yeah but see it was songs that made me sad not the uh or that not sad but just happy emotional no they, yeah they're emotional my emotions releases. squirted out my eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're that as they frequently do but you know it's an emotional yeah. burst of violence 
It was. <laughs> it was. I violently love this song. Well, <laughs> does anybody have any final thoughts on Tick, Tick, Boom before we uh, say goodnight? So Maybe. much better than Rent. It was much better than Rent. <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure I'll see it again, but I'll, I'll see it. I, I'm not sure I'll see it again and again, but I'd cheerfully see it again. Uh-huh. I mean, at the end of the movie, I thought maybe I should give Rent a chance, but now listening to you guys, maybe I won't. No. It was much no. better than Cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not Rent. Rent. Rent was not much better than Cats, but Tick, Tick, no, Boom no. was much better than Cats. Yes. Yeah, you're referring to that Saturday Night Live skit where they went to see the hypnotist. At the hip, the hypnotist made them remember, they would say, it was much better than Cats. <laughs> I'm going to see it again and again. And again. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to about do it for us here on What's on the Pile. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at What's on the Pile, and you can find us on YouTube under Punch Bunny at the Punch Bunny channel. Uh, or you can visit our website, whatsonthepile.com. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>